So in today's video, I've got a super quick one for you. I'm going to show you how to turn a day scene into a night scene by using the gradient map tool. I've touched on a simpler version of this technique in my town illustration tutorial, but today I'm going to go into it a bit more in depth. So here's the example artwork that I'm going to use to demonstrate the process. And if I open the layers panel, you can see it's kind of compressed down onto one layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate of it. And while the duplicate is selected, I want to apply a gradient map to this. So I'll go to my adjustments and then gradient map. And you can choose a few different options down here. I recommend using Mocha, and if I tap on it, it's going to show me the uh, options for this gradient. Now the reason I like to use Mocha is because it has five evenly spaced color options. And my colors here are different than what you're going to see because I've already messed with these. But basically all you have to do is go through and tap on each square, and you can change the hue and the saturation. And uh, in this case, since it's a night scene, I'm going to go through and change all these to various shades of blue and purple. And once I'm happy with each of the colors here, I want to adjust the brightness. So I'm going to select each square again, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to set the brightness slider to a point that represents where it is on the gradient. So since this is pretty evenly divided, this one's going to be 0%. So I'll make sure the uh, B here, the brightness slider, is at 0. This one is roughly at 25. So I'm going to try to set it there. There we go. This one is at 50%, about halfway. So I'll make sure this is set to 50. And I'll go on like this and do the rest of them as well. Now for the last one here, of course I'm going to set it to 100%. But one thing to consider, and this is only true with the last one here, is the saturation. This is going to control basically the, the whites and the highlights of your illustration. And I recommend having the saturation set to 0%. For the other colors here, it doesn't matter. You can set the saturation however you want. And once all that's done, and we're happy with how the gradient looks, we can apply the gradient by just tapping on the screen here, clicking Done, and then we can tap on our adjustments, and it will go back to kind of the normal Procreate painting mode. Now the reason we applied this gradient map to a copy of the original illustration is because I want to mess with how these two kind of mix together. So you can see them both in the Layers panel, and the first thing I recommend doing is kind of lightening the opacity of our gradient map copy. I think that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to select the original artwork, hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'm going to mess with the brightness, saturation, and hue of this one as well. I think it looks good if I raise the saturation of the original one, because that helps more of the original colors show through to the uh, gradient map copy. A side effect of messing with this is sometimes it will highlight uh, kind of weird issues with your illustration. And in this case, I had a very, uh, basically a pure white border that went around, and that's how I got this scratchy edge effect. And by making these adjustments, it sort of made the white uh, less bright and it's showing up. But don't worry about this for now, because we can fix this at the last step. The next thing we need to do to make this scene look more like night is kind of adjust the sky. And in most night scenes, not in every case, but almost every case, the sky will be the darkest part of the scene. So I'm gonna repaint the sky to be pretty much pure black. So for that, I'll make a layer above everything. I think I'll use a very dark uh, bluish tone like this. For the brush, I want something scratchy because my artwork is pretty scratchy. So I'm gonna go to the drawing tab and I'm gonna use the Freysonet brush to kind of loosely fill out the sky. Now the Freysonet brush is pretty bold and I wasn't really able to do a good job around the uh, smoke here. So I'm gonna go back over it with the eraser brush which is set to a pretty scratchy brush. In this case, it's the fine liner pen, but you could use any scratchy brush. And I'm gonna cut back my kind of black uh, painting here to show more of the smoke through. And at this point, I think it looks pretty good. It definitely looks like a night scene. So I'm gonna move on and add some lights to the windows. So for that, I'm gonna make another blank layer above everything. I'm gonna use a very saturated yellow tone for the brush. I think I'm going to use the, the gloaming brush here, and I'm going to paint on this yellow tone over each window. There we go. Now I did this yellow on its own layer because I want to adjust the transparency mode, and I'm going to set it to vivid light. After that, I'm going to duplicate my window lighting, so there's two layers of it. I'm going to select the bottom one, and I'm going to use Gaussian blur 
to soften it. And I think around maybe 15% is good enough. There we go. After that, I might adjust the transparency of kind of each copy here. It looks pretty good in this case. I think I'll just lower the transparency of the top one. There we go. After that, I'll merge both of those together. Then I'm gonna use the eraser brush. And I'm gonna carefully erase through this kind of glowing effect to show the black window frame. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, if light is coming out of these windows, it makes sense that we're getting a little bit of reflection on the trees outside. So I'm gonna add that next. So I'll make another blank layer above everything. I'm gonna use my same bright yellow tone, same gloaming brush. And I'll use this maybe around 50 or 60% size. And I'll just kind of go over those areas. There we go. I'd also expect some of the light to kind of catch the top of the roof here or the edge. So I'll go over that as well. And then just like I did with the windows, I'm gonna set the transparency of this layer to vivid light. You can also adjust the transparency as well, but I think this turned out okay, so I'm gonna leave it pretty high. Another thing you might wanna add for a night scene like this is maybe a moon in the sky with some stars. So for that, I'm gonna make another blank layer above everything. I'm still gonna use a yellow tone like I did for the windows, but I'll make it a little bit lighter. I can do this with the same gloaming brush in the drawing tab, and I'll just draw a circle for the moon. I'm gonna duplicate that as well. And just like I did before, I'm gonna select the bottom one and give it a Gaussian blur. There we go. Now this transparency is set to normal. For the moon itself, the top one, I'm gonna change that one to vivid light as well. There we go. It looks like it might be a little bit too saturated. So all I have to do is just lower the saturation of that layer and I can make it a little bit colder. And for the stars, that's super easy. I'll make another blank layer above everything. I'm gonna use pure white, but this time I'm gonna change to the little pine brush and I'm just gonna manually dot on some stars. And there we go. Now all I gotta do to finish this up is just fix my edge. So once again, this issue is happening because of a technique that I use in a lot of my videos. So in your case, you might not have this problem, but to fix it, all I'm gonna do is just go over it again. So I'll make a blank layer above everything. I'm gonna use pure white. For the brush, I'm gonna use the same brush I usually use for this, which is in the charcoals tab, the 6B compressed. And I'm just gonna use it to go over the edge and paint on a new layer of white. Now, sometimes when you turn a day scene into night, you end up with a black sky that's a little bit boring. So other than adding a moon and stars, you might also add some text up there as well. And there we go. That's how I turn any daytime scene into night. If this video was helpful, I'd be so grateful if you can give it a like. You're probably already familiar with my channel and what I do here. If you're curious about that and looking for a place to start, I think you might love to watch one of these tutorials next.